Hey guys, welcome to another video of Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll talk about numbers in Python, including integers, floats, booleans, and complex numbers. And we will go through how we can perform some of the basic arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And also, we will try to talk about some of the Python built-in functions for numbers. So let's get into this. So Python's numbers have three data types, integer, float, and complex. And we also have a Boolean data type, which is a sub data type of an integer. And the Boolean data type represents one or zero, meaning true or false. So let's first talk about the integer. So integer is a whole number, either positive or negative without decimal. Okay. And let's also do some arithmetic operations. So I'm going to print. 5 plus 7. So all you have to do is just put the plus sign in between two integers and if you run this you will see 12 here and the next one is a subtraction so I'm gonna do print 7 minus 5 run it then you will see 2 and reverse of that print 5 minus 7 and you will see minus 2 as well and moving on to the multiplication so I'm gonna do print 5 times 7 then you will get 35 and another one is the print 7 divided by 5 and run it, you would see 1.4. So one thing to keep in mind here is that if you divide any two integers within the Python, you would always see a float number like this. So even if you don't have any remainder, you would still see the float number. So if I were to do print 10 divided by 2, you're going to see 5.0 instead of 5. So this is something that we just need to keep in mind because if you have multiple arithmetic operations in one line and if you have a division in there, the entire result will be a float number because of the division. So now let's talk about the modular operator. So the modular operator returns the remainder from a division. So if I were to do a print 7 percent 5. So this percent sign means that you will get the remainder when you divide the 7 by 5. So when I run this, you will see 2 here because this is the remainder when you divide the 7 by 5. And let's see another example. So if I do a print 10 percent 3 then it's going to return 1 when you divide this number by this number. So moving on to the exponent. So if you want to get a power of something, then you would just do a print 2, 2 asterisk 3. So what this means here is that you are doing the 2 power of 3. So that if you run this, you would see 8. And then another example would be print 3, 2 asterisk 2 then you'd see 9 because you are doing the 3 power of 2. Okay, so finally to the flow division. So the flow division actually gets the quotient from a division. So if I were to do a print 7 divided by 5, so I'm just doing a normal division right now, then you'd actually see 1.4. So if I were to do a flow division of this, then you'd just see 1 because 1 is the quotient and 0.4 is the remainder. So let's try this out. So I'm going to do print. 7 2 4 slash 5 so this 2 4 slash indicates the flow division so if i run this then you'd see 1 as i said because it dropped the remainder here so one thing to keep in mind here is that when you have a negative number either in the left side or in the right side and try to do a flow division then it's going to return the rounded value meaning if i were to do a print negative 7 flow division by 5 it's going to return negative 2 instead of negative 1 because it actually rounded to the next negative value which is negative 2 here. So now we've talked about the sum of the arithmetic operators, let's talk about the order of operations. So what is shown in the screen right now is the order of operations from top to bottom. So at the top we have parentheses and to the exponent and then to the multiplication and division and finally to addition and subtraction. So this order of operations is telling us which arithmetic operations gets the precedence over others if we have more than one operators in the expression. So as you see in the screen right now the parentheses gets our top priority. So let me show you some example. So I'm going to print. 3 plus 5 times 2 okay so in this case the 5 times 2 will be multiplied first and then we're going to add 3 because the multiplication gets the precedence of the plus so if I run this you will see 13 so let me use the parentheses this time so I'm going to print parentheses 3 plus 5 then times 2 so now I'm putting the 3 plus 5 into the parentheses and then I'm adding 2 because the expression within the parentheses gets prioritized over any other operators so that we're going to run this first then we're going to multiply by 2. So if I run this then you will see 16. So now let's try to have an example where we use all the arithmetic operators that we have talked about. 
So I have the example ready here. So looking at this expression, this parenthesis gets our top priority because you know p is at the top here. And then we're gonna do the exponent, then to the division because it's from left to right, and then to the multiplication, and finally to the addition here. So if we run this, so we got a 10.0 here because we started from the 2 minus 1 which is 1 and then we go to the exponent so 6 power of 1 is 6 and to the division so 2 divided by 2 is 1 so 1 times 6 is 6 and then we're gonna add 4 which is 10.0 and we got a flow number because we have a division here okay so now we have some general understanding about the integer data type let's talk about the flow data type so float is a positive or a negative real numbers with a decimal point so if I have a 12, this is an integer, but if I put the decimal point, this becomes a float. And we can easily test this out by calling the type statement. So if I do a print type 12, this is going to return integer, as you see. But if I do the same thing, print type 12.0, and then run this you will see float data type. So we can do the same arithmetic operations that we did with integers to the float. So let me try a couple of things out. So I'm going to print 12.0 plus 1.0 and then run this, then you will see a 13.0. Then print 12.0 minus 6.0, then you see 6.0. Right? And for the multiplication, 3.0 multiplied by 4.0, then you will see a 12.0. And then division as well. So if I do a print 3.0 divided by 1.5, then you'd see 2.0. And then if I do a print 3.0 to asterisk, meaning the exponent of a 2.0. So I'm doing the 3.0 power of 2.0, then you'd see 9.0. And then finally to the flow division. So if I do 3.0 flow division by 1.5 run this then you'd see 2.0 because this is a quotient so let me try one more time print 3.0 at 1.7 then you'd see 1.0 because it dropped out the remainder here so the nice thing about the Python integer and float is that we can actually use them together in a single expression with the same order of operation. So let me copy the statement that I have up at the top here and then paste it down here. I'm going to change some values to a float number so that we can test it out. And if I were to run this, you would see a 10.0 which is the same result that we have received in this statement. Okay, so now let's talk about the complex number. So complex is a data type in Python. It's composed of a real number and an imaginary number. So let me show you an example. So in this case, 4 here is the real number and 2j is the imaginary number always followed by j. So let's try to do some arithmetic operations using the complex numbers. So I'm going to first create two variables. First complex and set that equal to 4 plus 2j. Then second complex and set it equal to 2 plus 1. So now we have a two complex variables. We're going to try to perform some arithmetic operations. So I'm going to do print first complex plus second complex. So the syntax is exactly the same as integer and float. You just put the plus button for the addition. So if I run this, then you will see 6 plus 3j. So the 6 is coming from the 4 plus 2 and 3 is coming from the 2 plus 1 here. And let's also do a subtraction. So print first complex minus second complex. And then if I were to run this, then you would see 2 plus 1j. So 2 coming from the 4 minus 2 and 1 coming from the 2 minus 1 here. And let's also do a multiplication. So multiplication. And let me first copy this so that we can see it. So for the multiplication, it works like a foiling. Okay. So what I mean by that is that we're going to foil the 4 plus 2j and 2 plus 1j together like this. So this comes down to 8 plus 4j plus 4j plus 2j squared, right? And we can further reduce this by 8 plus 8j plus 2j squared. And then the j squared in this case is equal to negative 1. You can just think of that. So what we can do here is that we can do 8 plus 8j minus 2. And then this can further reduce to 6 plus 8j. So let's write a print statement for the multiplication and let's check whether our answer is right. So I'm going to do print first complex times second complex and if you run this 
you will see a 6 plus 8j, which is what we have here. And so let's also talk about the division here. So for division, we need a more space to foil. So I just put all the equations into the screen here. So the first step for the division is to get the conjugate of the denominator. So our denominator right now is 2 plus 1j. So if we want to get the conjugate of that, it will be 2 minus 1j. So the conjugate just means the reverse of the sign in between the real number and then the imaginary number. So once we have the conjugate of the denominator, then we will be multiplying that to both the numerator and then the denominator and we're gonna go through the foiling process as before and we will put minus 1 for every spot that we have j square and the end result that we have is 2 so let's try to confirm this by writing a print statement with a division here so I'm gonna comment division and then print first complex divide by second complex and if we run this and you will see a 2 plus 0j so we have a 2 of the real number as we see in the screen right now and we don't have any j so the result here actually matches what we found okay so the last data type that we're going to talk about is the boolean data type so the boolean data type is a subclass of an integer because it's composed of a 1 and 0 meaning true and false so let's try to use a python equality operator to test whether true actually equal to 1 and false is actually equal to 0 so let me show you an example if i do a print 5 equal equal 5 so this 2 equal sign is the equality operator so we are checking here is that does the 5 actually equal to 5 so if we run this it's gonna return the boolean data type true because the 5 actually equal to 5 so if i change this to 4 and then run this one more time it's gonna return first because 5 does not equal to 4 so we can actually use the same concept here to check whether true is equal to 1 and first is equal to 0 so let me do a print true equal equal 1 and if i run this you will see true because the true is actually equal to 1 in python and let me also try this for the first to 0 and then run this you will see true as well because first is equal to 0 and let me also try the other way so if i were to do like a print parenthesis 5 equal equal 5 meaning this parenthesis will always run first so this is gonna return true and then if i say does this also equal to true so what I'm doing here is that I'm generating a first boolean here by checking whether 5 is equal to 5. So it's going to return true here and then I'm going to check whether this true is equal to true. So let me run this and then it's going to return true because the true is actually equal to true. So if I change this to 1, it's going to return true as well because 1 is identical to true as we tested here. So let's test this out and then you will see true again so now we've talked about the boolean data type and then the equality operator there is one thing that we have to keep in mind when using float with the equality operator so we tested that the equality operator works fine with the integers but the problem comes in when you try to compare the float number coming from another floating point operation so let me give you an example here so let's say that i have a three uh, floating point so let me first create a variable mm. So in this variable, I'm adding 0.1 three times. And if I were to do a similar thing as shown here, so if I gonna do print, 0.3 equal equal float example then you would actually expect true right because we are adding 0.13 times so that means that we are actually comparing 0.3 equal to 0.3 so let's run this then you receive first and the reason why this is happening is because the computer cannot store the exact value of float into the binary which is the format that the computer stores its data so what that means first is that when we use float it will always be an approximate value not an exact value and so just to prove why this is first here we can just simply print this out print float example and see the value and when you print this out you would actually see a long decimal point that is not equal to 0.3 so the thing here is that if you just delete this variable and just uh, put it equal to 0.3 it's gonna return true because this 0.3 is not coming from the floating point operations like this but if you try to compare the floating values that's coming from this kind of operations then the computers cannot really store that float value exactly so it's always gonna be an approximate value not an exact value so and there is a couple of ways where we can actually bypass these issues using different libraries however we haven't actually got into the functions who are using other libraries just yet so that we're gonna cover that in later videos okay so we are almost done here we're gonna talk about two pythons built-in functions that we can actually use with numbers so we're gonna talk about the round and apps 
So let's first talk about the round. So the round function allows you to round the floating point that you are dealing with. So let me create an example. So float example is 1.54523. And let's say that you want to actually round this floating point up until this point, the second position. So then what you can do here is that print round float example comma and specify the round that you want to actually chop so i want to say two so i want to chop it right here and if you run this then you will see 1.55 so that it was rounded up to the second position here so that if you change this to three then you will see 1.545 so this round function can be especially useful when you are dealing with a long decimal point like this and the next function that we're going to go through is the absolute function so let's say that you have an integer value so integer example like 13 i'm gonna put minus 13 and then the float example is minus 0 0.5 and then if you want to actually get the absolute value of this meaning the positive value of this then you can just call print apps integer example and then if you were to print this out you'd see a 13 here which is the absolute value for this minus 13 and same thing for the float so print apps float example and just run it you will see 0 0.5. So the absolute method here actually do work with a complex data type as well. So let me just copy the one of the data type here, the first complex, I'm gonna copy that. And then if I were to call the absolute method, print apps and then the, this variable name, first complex, this is gonna return the magnitude of the complex data type that we have. So if you run this, you'd see a 4.47, which is the magnitude of the first complex that we have here. Okay guys, that's it for this video. We've talked about numbers in Python, including integer, flow, boolean, and complex. So if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next videos.